Hey, this is Aaron from ISG. So Mitch at Axis Ironworks had a question about improvising cordage. In the book, it discusses improvising cordage, but as many of you know, uh, putting the pictures into the actual text became prohibitively expensive. Uh, so in order to get around that, we supplied instead uh, QR codes that would take you to um, articles, and those articles would essentially give you the um, information that you would need to kind of visualize whatever was being discussed. Now, in the case of improvising cordage, um, the picture is pretty old, and I wanted to go ahead and um, and start a, a video to describe what that it actually looks like. Now, I'm not in the field right now, um, but you can basically do this with just string as a as a a way to practice. Uh, it's a lot easier with string and I, I do suggest this just so you kind of get your bearings um, because oftentimes with improvising cordage in the field uh, you're dealing with some variability in terms of um, sort of the texture of the materials you're using. Sometimes it's a bit more dry or brittle, sometimes it's grass, sometimes it's dry grass, uh, sometimes it's something like ivy which is semi-flexible but will break. Um, so starting with a, a couple pieces of string will help a lot. And so what we'll do first is we'll tie two pieces of differing length together. Okay, And so we'll take the ends, and I'll try to get as much of this on video as possible. A lot of it will, will make sense pretty much instantly once it's described, and even with just a little bit of visual aid, it'll help a lot. Um, just a simple square knot is fine. Um, typically when we're doing this, we're not going to put a tremendous load on this cordage, it's more or less just to give a little bit more reinforcement to something that we've already uh, basically made structurally strong. And so oftentimes this is good for shelter building and the like. Okay, <laughs> let me get this done correctly here. And um, so when you're dealing with the cordage in a, an actual real life situation, you won't probably be able to just tie it, right? We, we all kind of know that, but you can twist it together, and if you have things like, I don't know, any sort of adhesive, a tape or something like that, you can put that on there, give it a little bit more um, strength. Usually it doesn't need it. Okay, so I made that a double hitch just in case. And so now what we will do is we'll take the two pieces that are connected, and we will sort of just weave them together. And so, uh, twist like so until we reach the bottom. I'm not going to do this a real tight uh, weave, and you actually won't want to either. Uh, if you do that, you'll, you don't get a ton of return on that investment. And so we want a sort of twist rate, for lack of a better term, of maybe three twists per inch. Uh, so it's not going to be insane. Uh, what that will do is it'll run you through your material too fast, and you'll end up having to basically scavenge more than is, is time efficient. And, and again, if you've got uh, paracord, this is stripped paracord. I use this stuff for, for all sorts of things. In fact, the reason I have this handy is because we were improvising fishing poles uh, a couple months back. and uh, Maybe I'll post a video of that too, because frankly, I've had great luck improvising cane poles and actually catching fish, which we actually caught some fish. And that was for the Boy Scouts. And so what I'll do is once I get down here, we've got a little bit of a braid. Uh, I'll just tie it off again. And so we can, that will stay this better. It's very cold here. I just came in so my fingers are freezing. Alright, get our little hitch or granny knot. And again, and so kind of the trick with this, and you'll see this in a second, is that um, what we've got here is we've got the end of one part of our cordage, and that was our shorter piece, and then we've got a little bit left. And what we'll do then is the exact same thing. We'll take another piece, we'll tie it on where we left off, and then we'll continue braiding. Now this is done because oftentimes you don't really have a uniform length, and a lot of the material that you might be using uh, is irregular, right? And so, um, well, I'm thinking of, of something like ivy, where you have it where it's real stout and robust until a certain point, and then it gets very flimsy, and you can't really predict just um, where that point will be, you just sort of harvest it, and then once you've got it in hand, you do the best with what you got. And so let's do another little granny knot. Okay, now let's get a little bow in it. Pretend like it's Christmas time. All right, and so you'll see the same thing happens here. Um, 
I got about six inches here when we pull this taut, maybe a, maybe a little less, maybe five. Um, and that gives us more room to continue this process. So we'll take, we'll just twist this again, twist rate of maybe three twists per inch or so, um, just to give it a little bit of extra strength. Now, this, the strength question is way more important with natural cordage. Now, using a rope or twine or the guts of paracord or something like that, this is a bit stronger more naturally and again when you're dealing with a natural cordage you may have break points that you can't really um, you can't really see well or maybe you're not uh, very experienced and so you're trying to throw this together kind of in a hurry uh, and you're not uh, well versed in identifying well what spot might break and so you can actually see with this cordage we've got fraying here right if I was using this um, to build something I would be careful of this this point here I may even choose to not use that strainer to reinforce it but in any case, so we'll just continue this process um, until we reach the, the natural conclusion, which is the end of this shorter piece of twine. And we'll leave ourselves a little bit of uh, space to tie it off. And then maybe we'll tie it off like so. And again, usually the knots you use here can be very, very simple. They don't have to be anything complicated that you learned in some special school or anything like that. It's just su super simple, regular everyday, everyday type stuff, right? Bam, there we go. And you might trim that just so you don't get confused, but um, you do have an obviously longer piece and that's where you would go next is you just find your next piece of cordage and you use that. And then when you wanted to actually go and apply this, you'd wrap it around, say, uh, a couple um, maybe a couple sticks that you're using as a, a frame for a shelter or something like that. You can sit you down and wrap it around a couple times like that so it holds nice and steady and that will give you a little bit of binding pressure. Uh, so that's improvising cordage. Hopefully you find this helpful.